For the past 28 years, this gentleman's job was to stay inside and to drive a truck. The left part of his face was exposed to the UV rays throughout the car's window. The right part of his face was staying in the shade for the most of the time. Now we will look into the science to find out why the SPF in your foundation, in your cream, is simply not enough. To get the required protection, you would have to use this much of a product. And it's simply like, you tell me, do you really use that much of a makeup? Hi, I'm Piotr Lipinski and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about sunscreens and I'm going to answer the most asked questions I get every day from my clients. Before we start, just a small disclaimer, I am not a dermatologist or any other licensed professional. I did a lot of research before recording this video and the research comes from very experienced, smart and educated people and I would really love to credit those today. I would like to credit Michelle, who is a science educator with a PhD in chemistry, who runs the labmuffin.com. I also educated myself from the website called thebeautybrains.com, who is written by a group of cosmetic scientists. And I read the articles made by Perry Romanovsky. I also had a look at kindsofstephen.com, run by Airline Cop, a cosmetic formulator. I will link all their social media accounts, websites, and another website I have used to formulate this video down in the description box. I will only briefly answer the questions here and if you would like to educate yourself a little bit more and go more into the details about sunscreens please follow those people I have mentioned before go to their websites and check out their content it's really worth it people think that they have to use the sunscreen only when they're outside but the truth is that you have to use the sunscreen even when you are indoors simple as that if you have a windows at home you should be using a sunscreen UVB rays they cannot penetrate through the glass window that's why when you're inside, you're never going to feel like you're tanning, you're never going to feel that your skin got a little bit burned, nothing. Your skin is not gonna feel anything. That's why you might have the illusion of that when you're inside, sun really doesn't get to your skin. But the UVA rays, they do penetrate through the glass window and these rays are very dangerous in terms of aging your skin. To memorize it better, UVB, where B stands for burn, and UVA rays, where A stands for aging. Maybe you're gonna remember it better in this way. Remember this picture of the gentleman who was a truck driver for the past 28 years? Obviously, he didn't put any sunscreen on his skin because he didn't feel like his skin was tanning or burning or anything like this, but he didn't know about the UVA rays, which has penetrated through the window and it aged his skin completely. So basically what you can see on the picture is a thickening of epidermis. And that's the most simple example I can think of to convince you to wear a sunscreen indoors. It's a summertime here in Denmark and we are selling extreme amount of sunscreens every day. But nobody ever buys them in the winter time, only they buy it in the situations when people are going for holidays, somewhere abroad when it's still warm. And I'm like, you have to really wear a sunscreen, doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Summer, winter, doesn't matter. If it's a winter time, and even if it's cloudy outside and it's raining, the sun rays, the UV rays still hit your skin. So when it's cloudy outside, the clouds block only 20% of the UV rays, but the 80% which is left still hits your skin. And that's the answer why you have to use the sunscreen, doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Sunscreen leaves a white cast on my skin and I don't like it. What kind of sunscreen I should use to get rid of the white cast? Not all the sunscreens are gonna leave your face with a white cast on. There's two types of sunscreens based on the active ingredients. There's the physical sunscreens, which contain zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, and those ingredients can leave you a little bit of the white cast on your skin. There is still a lot of good mineral sunscreen which don't leave you any white cast, but just in general, the mineral sunscreen, physical sunscreens, leave you a little bit off with a white cast. And there is another group of sunscreens called chemical sunscreens based on the ingredients. And those ingredients are basically everything else but zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. 
and these chemical sunscreens are great for darker skin tones because they are really well known for sunscreen which don't leave you any white cast on. So no, there's definitely tons of different sunscreens on the market which doesn't leave you with any white cast on. They are basically invisible. When the clients come to me to purchase a sunscreen, all of them are very afraid. They have this like stereotype in their head which it's telling them that all the sunscreens are greasy or oily or just very, very thick. But the truth is that these days the almost every company is having and selling a different sunscreen, right? So there is a big competition on the market and there's so many new formulas companies implemented to make the sunscreen being as invisible, as lightweight as possible. I don't need a sunscreen because in my foundation there's an SPF of 25 and also I'm putting SPF 30 which is in my moisturizer, so I am basically covered. No, you are not covered at all, you are not. So before the sunscreen goes on the market to the public, it has to go through a lot of different tests. The amount used in the sunscreen studies just to determine the SPF factor you can see on the packaging of your sunscreen is two milligrams of a sunscreen per a square centimeters of your skin. Obviously, every skin is different and sometimes you will have to apply more than two milligrams per square centimeter of your skin. And how to know which and what is it two milligrams of a sunscreen? The good rule to remember is that to get the labeled SPF protection of the sunscreen, you would have to apply half of a teaspoon of a sunscreen just to get the right protection, right? But this goes for your face and neck. And if you like to apply the correct amount only on your skin, only for the face, you would have to use something between one fourth of or maybe one third of a teaspoon of the product. Do you apply that much of a foundation and do you reapply it after two hours? Exactly. So just to make sure you apply enough, I would recommend to do it twice. You apply a first layer of a sunscreen, wait approximately 10 minutes, and afterwards apply a second layer. In this way, you're making sure that you apply your sunscreen evenly and there's no empty patches left. No, 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 I'm not going to use any sunscreen. I just wanna make sure I'm getting evenly and nicely tan. And my answer to it is that you're going to tan no matter what SPF you're using. Even if you're using SPF 50, you're still going to get tan, but you're going to do it a little bit slower. And now the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to tan a little bit slower but being safe on the sun? Or maybe you just prefer to get skin cancer. Like, it's a no-brainer for me. I don't wear a sunscreen because I really wanna get the vitamin D into my body. And I get it, vitamin D is vital for your bone health, for your immune system, for many other very good health benefits. But you can also get a lot of vitamin D from foods, from different drinks, uh, you can take a different types of supplements. Obviously, I know that the best way to get the vitamin D into your body is to be exposed to the UVB rays, which means you have to be outside. And now, how to balance it out? How do you make sure that you get enough of vitamin D while still wearing sunscreen? Because this is what a lot of people are talking about, that they really do not want to wear sunscreen because they're afraid they're not going to get any vitamin D at all, but that's not true. Wearing a sunscreen doesn't have much effect of vitamin D levels. That's because a lot of people are not applying enough sunscreen and we are also missing a lot of spots. For example, do you apply sunscreen into your scalp or do you apply sunscreen between your fingers? Exactly, and that's already enough to get enough vitamin D into your body. Just to read a little bit more about it, how long you have to be outside to get enough of vitamin D and all of that stuff, again, I link everything down below. But what you have to remember is that wearing a sunscreen doesn't have much of an influence of the vitamin D levels into your body and you should be wearing sunscreen just to protect you from getting a skin cancer. Does sunscreen is gonna cause my skin to break out? It is the same as you would ask if the moisturizer is gonna break out your skin. 
Think of it as a bigger picture. If you're using acne medication or using active ingredients like retinol or alpha hydroxy acid, no matter what, you have to use the sunscreen because your skin barrier is gonna be very, very compromised. If you are not using sunscreen, you are going to experience getting some more brown spots, pigmentation, and this is going to be super, very, very hard to get rid of. So why not just to prevent it and wear sunscreen? We destroy the coral reef by wearing a sunscreen. There is not enough evidence that wearing a sunscreen with certain ingredients very near to the color reef can cause a color reef bleach. At high doses, everything is a poison. Water can kill you, drinking a coffee can kill you, drinking too much energy drinks can kill you, right? Everything can kill you. So it depends on the dose. Every high dose can be potentially a poison. Sunscreen could have a negative effect on the coral reef if there were like thousands of different people located into one place, for example, a closed bay, very close to the coral reef, and all of those people would have to be covered properly in sunscreen with the amount they should be wearing. But who is wearing the right amount of sunscreen? And where are the places where like there's so many people coming to the water at the same time and also sunscreen doesn't like dissolve 100% into the water you will still always have something left on your body so all of the studies perform and which are proving that maybe the sunscreen it's um, toxic to the color reef uh, you have to really have a look at the bigger picture of it, how the studies have been taken, what was the concentration of all of it. So really, I will link down below all of the re related studies to it if you want to read a little bit more about it. What SPF factor I should be using? You should be using at least SPF 30 and my personal recommendation would be to use SPF 50. It is because almost no one applies as much sunscreen as they should be applying. So let's say you are using SPF 30 and you have applied less than you should be applying. The factor you see on the packaging, it's gonna drop by half or one third. And that's a lot, you are not getting enough protection. So basically higher the SPF factor than better and that's what I would recommend you doing. Also make sure that the sunscreen you have protects you from UVA and UVB rays. You should also be looking for a star rating up to five stars. And for example, in UK, higher the star rating, the higher protection you have from UVA rays, the aging rays. One application of the sunscreen in the morning, it's gonna last me for the whole day. It's simply not true. You have to reapply your sunscreen at least every two hours, or if you're going to the beach and you're going to take a swim, you have to reapply your sunscreen straight away because it's simply gone. All right, guys, just to wrap it up everything, sunscreen is the best and the most affordable anti-aging product you could ever invest in. It's not only gonna protect your skin from the aging process, I mean, it's gonna slow it down a little bit, it's gonna protect you from pigmentation, dark spots, and all of that stuff. On top of that, it's lowering the risk of getting a skin cancer, and that's very serious. Forget about the bathing, sun beds, however you call them, solarium. Do not go on the sun bath bed because it's even worse than going on the sun during the daytime. The UV rays are way more concentrated and they can cause cancer way more faster compared if you just went outside. In the next video, I'm gonna share with you guys what are my favorite sunscreens and which of them work perfectly for me. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.